Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today, what we're going to talk about is the most important thing that you need to know if you're ever going to create any sort of audio effect in Juice, especially if you're going to create any sort of stereo or multi channel audio effect. You absolutely need to know how to do this. And what we're talking about is how to set up your process block. So right now I'm in the process block in my plugin processor. And so what we're talking about is creating lower level kind of DSP algorithms where we're starting getting where we're starting to get into some of the mathematics and um, some of our own DSP processes. Okay, so I'm going to explain this to you as quickly as possible. And then I'm going to show you two ways that you can handle this process block. So before I start, uh, I wanted to say that this tutorial has been uh, created with the help of uh, one of my colleagues in the Netherlands, Casper Ravenhorst. So big up to Casper for um, for showing me this, and he's been a big help in uh, helping me put this together. So so what we have is we have a uh, we have some data coming in through our read pointer. So we're taking audio in. We're going to do some processing to it, and then we're going to put it out through. Our, our, uh, our right pointer through our output data. Okay, so that's pretty simple. And we're gonna use a uh, DSP process, which is just, which is just a uh, simple mathematical algorithm that I have separated in a class. Doesn't really, it's not really relevant as far as what we're doing, uh, what, what the algorithm actually is. It's just a simple high pass filter. But the important thing is what we need to do in order to, to get it working. So this is a perfectly, um, understandable situation that a lot of developers run into when we're first starting is something that I've run into and that I wasn't quite sure how to handle it. And it's, and the situation goes like this. Basically, you're reading some sort of DSP book. And let's say you have some sort of delay or some sort of filter uh, algorithm that you wish to implement into your project. Well, it's perfectly understandable that what you do is you take the algorithm, you plug it into your process block, you go through, you do your equations, put it out through the, through the, uh, through the right pointer, compile it, everything compiles fine. And then when you run, when you actually run your plugin, what you find is that you get some sort of messed up audio. It could be distortion or it could be discontinuities in your audio. Something's happening where it just doesn't sound right. It's just not working right. What's happening? Okay. So this is a very common problem. Apparently, uh, it's, it's something that's come up recently on the forum as one of the most discussed things that, uh, comes up as a problem again and again. And I'm going to show you two ways of how to, uh, correct this issue. So at the moment, what we have if you can see, I'm going through a nested for loop, just nothing out of the, nothing uh, out of the ordinary here. And then uh, I have my input data. Basically what I'm doing is I'm doing some processing and then I'm putting it to the output data. If you look at total, total number of output channels, basically we're running in a stereo situation. So we have two, um, we have uh, two outputs, okay? But what the problem is, um, is that basically when you get down, so, so you're at channel zero and then you go, you create these variables and then you go into your inner loop here. Then you go and you start filling your, your number of samples. Now, the problem that we run into is that a lot of these, uh, algorithms, they run off of a concept where what you have to do is you have to take a previous sample and then you have to feed it back into you have to feed it back into your algorithm somehow so you have to take a sample and you have to hold it back and then you have to feed it back in okay and so this is something that's very that's a very common process that you have to do okay now the problem is that once you come to the end of this sample of this sample block okay so your buffer fills up you get to your last value where you have like your last previous sample in this buffer from channel zero. And then what happens is that you come to the outer loop, the channel goes to channel one. So now you're in your right speaker, your other speaker. But then when you come into the inner block, the, the delayed sample is still the last sample from channel zero. Okay, and that could produce some sort of continuity, uh, discontinuity, or some sort of distortion or some, something that's not right in your audio. So what we have to do is we have to think about doing the DSP processing um, on the left-hand side and then on the right-hand side, and we need to do those separately. Now, how can we do that? 
Well, there are a couple different ways. The kind of naive way, the way that I thought of it at first was, well, you know, we could just create all kinds of different variables. We could create an input data, an input data for the left channel, the input output uh, output data for left and right channel, just basically create left and right versions of everything and then <laughs> run your algorithm like that. It's kind of a naive way to, to do it. So I'm going to show you an easier way. And um, I'm going to show you two ways. Like I said, this is with the help of my man, Casper Ravenhorse. So big up to him. So it goes like this. So first thing that we're going to do is we need to find a way to process the left channel and then process the right hand channel. Okay, or at least to separate separate the processing that's happening on those two channels. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a static const int k channels. I'm going to create two channels. So this is just so I can tell uh, this array I'm about to create that I've got two channels. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. Oh. I need to get my T here. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to make this into an array. Okay. And a two, a two position array. Okay. So what this is going to do is this is going to hold the delayed sample um, in the place of the left hand channel and then the right hand channel might not be clear to you quite how that's happening but it'll hopefully become apparent to you here shortly okay so now we're going to go to our plugin processor and then what i'm going to do is i'm just going to so here's our delayed samples the sample that we're delaying okay and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put channel here okay now before we start what i need to do is i need to initialize the delayed sample to zero because if we if we stop the audio and then start the audio again we would like the last delayed sample to be zero so we don't want any values left over from uh from the last time that we were playing audio okay so to do that i just need to use a nested for i, I need i just need to use a for loop to initialize this uh delayed sample because this is a this is an array now okay so i can say four INTI equals zero. I is less than K channels since we're talking about two channels. I plus plus. And then I've got this. And so I can say delayed sample at I equals zero. So we just have two, we just have two indexes um, in this delayed sample array. Okay, so that's just for channel zero and channel one. Okay, so now we have this. Um, so now we have this process where what I've done is I've separated the delayed sample out to um, to the channel. So so if we just go through the process of how this happens. So when the channel is zero, we're going in, we're doing our processing, everything is fine, and then what we have is we have delayed sample and then what it's doing is it's it's constantly changing the value of what is that, whatever is sitting at index 0 okay so is so since we have two since we have two values here that we can modify 0 index 0 and index 1 at this point since we're in channel 0 it's just continually changing whatever is sitting at index 0 and then once that finishes, this channel will then turn to one, okay? And then it's modifying that value. So that's how that's working. That's how we're doing the separate, that's how we're separating these samples, okay? And that's how we're keeping that, we're keeping those two channels separated so that we don't have the delayed sample, the, the sample that we're holding back going from channel zero into channel one or channel one back into channel zero. We're keeping those two channels separate like that okay so we're going to go ahead and build see if see if it compiles all right okay and what i've just created like i said it's not really it's not really kind of relevant it gets, kind of gets away from what the tutorial is actually about but um it's, it's just like a very simple uh high pass filter okay i'm not even i don't even know if i really want to show it to you because it's um because it kind of gets away from what 
uh, what I'm trying to emphasize the tutorials about. So I'm just going to go ahead and test this out. So I'm just loading my sample player here. If I can. Okay, I'm going to load this. It's going to take a second to load. Then in the meantime, I'm just going to pull up an audio file that I can plug in. Um, so, so here we go. So I'm just going to plug this up and plug it in. And then load the audio file. Okay, here's the audio file. I can play this. And so this should be a high pass filter. Yeah, so you see it's a really simple high pass filter. So we can hear that that, that that works fine. And like I said, so so the whole idea of it is that we're handling the processing from channel zero. So so that so the sample that we're holding back um, when we're on channel zero is always going to be um, is always going to be relevant to channel zero and also for channel one. OK, so I'm going to so I showed you this way, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to show you another way now, which is going to be to actually take the actual DSP process. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate that into left channel and right channel. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this. OK, so we have two arguments for our DSP process. And then I'm just going to correct that over here. OK, and then here in my header file. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just comment out of this. And now I'm going to take delayed sample. I'm going to take the delayed sample, and I'm actually just going to implement that in as a global variable in the DSP process itself. OK, so this is going to be float delayed sample. And then what I can do here is that I got so now I have delayed sample. So in my algorithm itself, I have this variable delayed sample, which is what I was taking in as an argument before. OK, but the problem is, is that I don't have it initialized. So I don't have it. I don't have a way to initialize it just yet like I did here. OK, because uh, before I was initializing it. So I need to create a function that initializes the um, the delayed sample to zero. OK, so what I could do is I could just go in here. I could just create another function. I'll just call this void prepare to play. OK, and then I can just create that here. So void DSP process prepare to play. And then what I can do is I can use an initialization list. So we've talked about this before, OK, where I say delayed sample 0, 0.0. OK, so now I've now I've created a constructor here. And that should be fine. What have I missed here? Um. Oh, no, I don't I, I don't use an initialization. Um, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a constructor. So we went through that option as well. So I could just say here, delayed sample equals 0, 0.0. Okay, so now what we have, we have our process and all that. Okay, so now what we could do is we could go back in here. And what I could do is I can say, OK, we have two channels. So now I can take my DSP process, where I'm doing all my processing. And I can say that I want k channels of that. OK, so I've made that into an array. OK, now 
when I go back into the processor itself, I need to initialize. I need to initialize all of those, uh, all of those processes to zero all of the delayed samples. Okay, so we have DSP process dot prepare to play. And I think that's, ooh, what have I done? Um, I've got prepare to play, got prepare to play there. Okay, so what has happened? What's it saying? DSP process, oh, it needs to be, oh, it's because it's an array. So, so yeah, so I have two, so, so in this case, I have um, a two index array of DSP process objects, okay, and that I'm initializing all of those to zero, okay? Now we come down, okay? We've already gotten rid of that third argument there, okay? And now what I could do is I could say DSP process channel dot process, okay? So what it's doing, once again, is that when it's channel zero, it's doing the processing, it's doing its thing, and then when it's channel one, then it's going to a whole separate DSP process dot process, and it's doing that separately for channel one. So let's just build that, make sure that it works properly. So here we go. I can pull up my audio player that takes me forever to get to here. In the meantime, so get juice to do, do builds. Build debug. Okay, um, has it done it? Okay, there's our thing. And then I can pull in my audio file. And then I can go to the music, grab a tune while it's while this thing is loading. Um, where where's my music? So. Here we go, audio file player, just loading a file here. Now we're just gonna load the plugin itself. Okay, and then we're just gonna plug everything up and try it out. Okay. Okay. Okay, it is it is working properly. Cool. So, what to take away from this in summary? Okay, you got to separate you got to separate your channels and do the processing separately on each channel and I've shown you two ways to do that. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments or any feedback, just uh, just drop me a line in the comments below or just uh, come over to the Discord group and uh, and talk with us if you're having any sort of trouble setting this up. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and I will see you next time.